Hello, Mikey's. Very good afternoon and another warm welcome to the virtual Nkuku, the VM. It's your boy Penuel, the Black Pen, and today I've got a really, really amazing co-host. I call her a co-host because we don't do guests and interviews here. I have someone who's going to be asking me questions, chatting to you guys on camera as well. I just want to send a shout out to the guys that I work with, Hukif Nduma and Mbanele Mota Ubanza. Those are the guys that do our uh, photography, our film. If you're looking to do something like this, a podcast, a podcast, please hit them up on the drop a link of their work below. Please don't forget to click on the subscribe button. Don't forget to click on the notification bell as well. Pumzile Tracy Wilborn. Yes, sir. Welcome to the virtual Nkuku. Thank you so much. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. It's a beautiful sunny day. So it is. Yeah. Thank you for good. joining us. If you can please speak to camera and just tell people who you are, maybe your name, where you uh, come from, and what you do for a living. Okay. Hi, everybody. My name is Pumzile Tracy Wilborn, as Penn mentioned. And I'm from Johannesburg, born and bred. I'm a professional freelancer. I've been freelancing for over 10 years now. And I teach corporate English online as a full-time gig now. What's I've been doing that for what, about what four years. What freelancing work do you do? I do project managing, project coordinating, production managing. Yeah. But you know that's generic. That could mean anything. Okay. Project I work manage, in film. Building. Okay. I, I work in film, or I used to work in film, okay. and used to help the producers with the shoots. Sure. And before that, I was in office management at Older Films, where I got to, um, yeah, got to run the place. So I was responsible for introducing the systems and sure. running the place and making sure everybody knew what to do, basically. Okay. Yeah. What's, what's corporate English? We know normal yeah. Shakespeare. <laughs> What's corporate English? It's a fancy way of saying I help people prepare for business meetings and presentations mm -hmm. and to help them at any level. So we work with beginners, people mm -hmm. who basically don't know a word of English. Mm -hmm. And we also work for with more advanced speakers. So sure. people who speak English every day because we've become more global workspaces mm -hmm. and it's become even more important for um, global companies to interact with their global teams. So I have an idea of some of the work you do, but I yeah. guess for the benefits of, of the viewers at home, uh -huh. um, corporate English is something you teach to normal South Africans mm -hmm. that already know English. Do you teach people overseas? Mm -hmm. Do you teach first language people that have never spoken English? Right. So the company I work for mm -hmm. primarily caters to companies. So we okay. work only with employees who have been, um, well, they're not really forced, but they've been put on the program sure. to learn English through our company. And we work with learners throughout Europe, throughout Asia, okay. and throughout the Americas. You don't yeah. do Africa? Um, I think we used to, but at some point... Not so much anymore because it's interesting. I think most people travel to South Africa yeah. to have their workers and their kids learn English um, practically. So I don't know if that actually has anything to, to do with it. But yes, there's a huge market for people who want to teach English um, in person. In so South Africa. I've got two kids, Unkunzi no Africa. Unkunzi yeah. is 12, Africa's nine. Okay. They're currently based in China. Their mother teaches English there. Mm -hmm. T TEFL, T E T E F L, teaching English as a foreign, foreign language. language yes. She's teaching there in China. She used to teach in South Korea. Okay. Do you know the links between what she's been doing, mm -hmm. what she's doing, and the work that you're doing? The way I see it, I think it's she was probably recruited by a specific company to work just for that company. Okay. And it's more or less the same thing, except she's there physically. I'm okay. online. I log into a system and work for one company and they provide me with the learners. Same thing with her school. They sure. provided her with the learners. So with her, she probably worked with recruitment yeah. and went that way. I did it all school. I went online and applied to, I think it was 18 different companies. Then three came back positively and were, yeah, then I got to choose between the two. And I chose... Why, why English? Why teaching English as a foreign language? Um, to be honest, it's nothing really 
there's no fancy reason behind it except for the fact that I love the language. Mm. Um, I used to teach myself different parts of English from grammar to vocabulary to... Teach yourself? Um, yes. So, okay. That sounds boring and <laughs> It probably is, yes, but I'm... Teaching yourself, not like in a class. You just go and you study grammar and vocab. Yeah, and that's Pretty. that's probably something that I, I really enjoy. I'm a self-taught person for the most part, so okay. anything that I, I've learned, an autodidact is probably the f- formal term for it. Autodidact. An autodidact, yes. A person that loves self self self-taught. Okay. Yes, and okay, there's two parts to it, because I don't think everyone is necessarily self-taught, because you're learning something because someone on the internet is teaching sure. or whatever, but you're actively sitting there choosing what you want to learn and picking through the resources so in a way it's it's a self-taught thing but um, yeah taught myself a lot about um, the fundamentals of the language and fell in love with it and I'm an avid reader so because I don't spend lots of time Mm. um, on something without finding a way to benefit from it in some way I always figured that I would start a school and because, well, during this whole thing of being self-taught, I was introduced to MOOCs about 12 years ago. Two? MOOCs. So MOOCs, MOOCs are mass open online courses. Okay. MOOCs. And yes. What is MOOCs? It's open to the public? Very open to the public, but it's very different from what it was in the past. In the past, okay. you could basically go to any um, local, inter- okay, no, I don't think locals did it at the time, but you could go to any university's website in the past and have access to the actual um, textbooks and Mm -hmm. their lectures and um, video clips of what actually happens in the classrooms so you could sit in for free and tune in but now you have them in online courses so they formalized it and and sold it it basically to the public yeah which is not necessarily a bad thing because it's a lot more organized than what it used to be fair enough yeah so yeah, I guess. Um, yeah. Why would you leave? Mm-hmm. So you do freelancing, but why would yes. you leave that as a core mm-hmm. and do English? Is there good money? Uh-huh. Had you heard of someone or was it from studying English that you ended up getting Doing involved? I, like, did you stumble across it while you were studying? Or did you hear someone saying, I teach this? And you're like, oh, this sounds dope because I like the language. Right. So, okay. Um... I didn't really have a plan for it. It wasn't like, okay, I'm going to become an English teacher. Sure. Um, it probably was circumstantial because, like I mentioned earlier, that I wanted to start a language school. That was the main thing. Yeah. And I had this big idea that I was going to start a website and get the kids from my neighborhood, from Hillbrook area, Yeovil, to kind of tune into this thing because I felt like, why is not anyone, why isn't anyone catching on yeah. to MOOCs? You know, it's probably I what I feel like probably the best university in the world right now Jeez. is online. You have access to so much. But uh, anyway, that plan transformed into another plan where I planned to move to Angola okay. um, to start the language school. And I would start with English. And this well, basically is... basically Portuguese then. Yes, okay. exactly. And so there's a huge demand for English teachers in, in Portuguese-speaking and French-speaking countries. Um, Which are the Balkan on the continent. Right, With exactly. Mostly British colonies, French colonies, and then some Portuguese. Right, sure. Exactly. So, Angola was an easy entry for me because I have so many friends who are Angolan, so they would introduce me to their people and mm-hmm. I'd find a way to basically build the school. Um, but that didn't work out, so I came back to the country okay. and had to make a living. So, teaching English became a no-brainer and was like okay I have a certain level of but it's interesting because I didn't have the teaching interest um teaching experience I'd never taught before formally before that and did you you want to teach or did you want to create a school I two separate things right so I you mean when I wanted to go to Angola when you wanted to go to Angola when you Mm -hmm. had this vision of having a language school in Hillbrook and around right did you want to have a school or did you want to have a space where you teach did you want to teach right did you want both i basically wanted to create i didn't necessarily see myself as a person who was teaching because 
with the online community, you basically sit in and you do everything yourself. You yeah. don't miss, you don't need to have an active teacher present showing you the stuff and so on. So you, oh yeah, sorry, I had this idea that people would come into like a workspace, a hub of sorts, yeah. and you tune in to whatever computer is accessible, and maybe you'd be able to communicate with someone else on the other side mm -hmm. who's experienced in whatever, because there are so many professions that I didn't even know existed. And I thought it would be a great idea if the people around me were exposed to that. Sure. Um, I remember sitting in Bramfontein one day using the internet there, and I was sitting next to this kid and he saw us downloading some stuff. And he's like, what are you downloading? I'm like, I'm downloading a PDF. <laughs> and he's like, how are you doing that on your phone? And that made me realize that there are so many things people don't understand about the potential and the power of having a cell phone, a smartphone, you yeah. know? So that was my main idea that I wanted to help people become more acquainted with the possibilities of what they could do mm. with their smart devices or just their devices in general. And have, have that was you, the main idea. Have you shut down the idea? Not entirely, no, because it creeps in just in small bits and ways where I'm like, okay, maybe I could start small with workshops and do, you know, stuff like that. What I did though was before teaching English online, I used to have um, lessons with my neighbors and teach them how to use computers because it's surprising just the number of people who don't know how to use a computer and that sure. would allow them to have better jobs either as a receptionist or a call center and yeah that's that's how we started um, also teaching the neighborhood kids uh, basic things like phonics and stuff was pretty cool my niece is probably the best product in, this in all was of before that. you started teaching um, the computer and the phonics yeah, this was all before I started so you've teaching been teaching English. English. I have. Formally. And now that you mention it, I actually didn't, it didn't register in my head that I was actually teaching. Mm. I was just showing people sure. what to do and helping them learn something. But yes, I guess in practice, it was a part of my teaching journey. Do you still have a wish and to build hubs where yeah. you're teaching people things that you can see can become a game changer? Internet, smartphone mm -hmm. usage computers right i i would like to explore that there's a reason i'm asking because yeah. there's people out there who probably have the same yes um i know you're very passionate about where you grew up and yeah. i think it's coming through that you're passionate about empowerment yes which i think time. is why you want to do this right and there might be people out there who are like i've i know MOOCs. Mm -hmm. i know other online platforms i know where we can get cheap or free wi-fi and right. they might want to connect with you and be like whatever your dream was yeah we want to ignite it or we want to help you. We want to partner with you because it seems you're doing it alone. Right. And maybe that's why it hasn't moved. So much. Maybe. Wanted. Yeah. I, I would be more than happy to chip in and to be part of that. Yeah. Um, if I'm being honest, it's probably not something I've taken on fully because I do have quite a bit that I do. do. And it can be hard actually just finding time to channel sure. and focus on one thing but uh, I would love to collaborate and if someone's already got something going I'm more than happy to to help where I can yeah um you are doing the work of the British colony mm -hmm. how so uh you're like a missionary okay so I'm I'm very passionate about English okay um, yeah we get called coconuts and funny things right. by different people Yes. I fell in love with the language very early. And mm -hmm. my favorite teachers all throughout high school, all throughout primary school, my English teachers. I was an avid reader. Yeah. From when I was very young, I fell deeply in love with the language. Okay. I don't know many other languages. I speak Zulu. Mm -hmm. uh, I speak Afrikaans. Uh, but English for some reason. And right. look, it's a mixed masala language because it's gone around borrowing from different people. Right. But if you look at what the British Empire has done in colonizing mm -hmm. nations and spreading their culture, mm -hmm. drinking tea, high tea with the queen mm -hmm. and dressing in a suit and all these, it's almost like some of us, because that was one of my thoughts when a lot of black South African kids were traveling the world teaching English. Do you guys realize you're becoming like the Cecil John Rhodes mm -hmm. and the Alan Grays of this world going around doing the work of the British Empire? Right. Do you never feel like that or do you have a different relationship with language in mm -hmm. itself. Why, why English? 
And do you not feel like you're selling out? You could be teaching Zizulu. Right. You could be teaching Swahili. Yeah. Why not them? Huh, interesting. Um, I grew up speaking English, so yeah. it's basically... It's like you grew up Christian. Nature. Yeah, well... So, you know, like, guys, <laughs> Jesus is Lord. Please come pray, come to church. Right. Well, not necessarily, but it's easier for me to teach what I live, breathe, eat, yeah. and something that's able to, to feed me, clothe me, and... Yeah, it's, it, it doesn't take much effort because I do it effortlessly. It's, sure. it's a big part of who I am. Do you know other languages? And I do, yeah. I know Zulu, but not not your Zulu. <laughs> I speak Jogak Zulu, so it's oh, a mix of everything. Zulu, 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 Zulu. <laughs> what? He's, uh, no, it's... Um, yeah, I do speak different languages, but just to answer your question, it's... Uh, I I think the English shows me because okay. I think I communicate best in English. And it's probably high in demand throughout the world, so it makes it easy, e even easier to get sure. into it. So I'd love to teach Zulu if I could. Uh, I mean, I could, but I, I don't think I'm fluent enough to mm -hmm. become a Zulu teacher, so it makes sense to teach English. Do you have intel on teaching English as a foreign language in terms of where people can go? Right. Maybe the type of work you do. And then obviously a lot of people don't know the money uh -huh. that maybe gets made. I brought my phone and you spoke about smartphones. And I know yes. we've spoken about it before, the power of using this thing to make money. Absolutely. You teach right. using this or using a computer? Both. You so, use both. Yeah, especially during load shedding. It's coming very handy. Sure. And, um, so not so, how much you make, because that might be confidential. But just like a range. <laughs> I'll give you a range. <laughs> okay, so getting into teaching English is relatively simple if you are someone who's passionate about working with people and yeah. speaking the language daily and learning as you go. Yeah. Because um, I, and yeah, okay, so maybe let's speak about qualifications and so on. I don't have any formal education. Um, everything I know basically is from online schooling, and I did. In terms of teaching, or in terms of teaching and in general, so you've got matric. I've got matric. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> then, <laughs> and then, but not, then nothing beyond that. But that's the thing. It's and maybe this is where you can chip in with your point of view. I did two years mm. of online learning, doing creative journalism with the university, virtual university of Pakistan, back when it was still free, right? And my thing was, I wasn't fixated on getting the qualification. So it never registered in my head that, oh, shoot, I need to maybe go to, I almost saw, but I tried to cover. Anyway, um, it never you almost was saw. a, yeah, I almost saw. Please I kind feel of, free. This is a free space, guys. To be done, but a shit. <laughs> Sorry, please continue. Um, I was someone is going to judge you at home. Upumzi, to be done, but this is what you so I wasn't fixated on getting the qualifications. Yeah. For me, it was just about getting the knowledge because yeah. I knew I could put it into practice. I didn't necessarily have a plan of, okay, this is what I'm going to do with it. But I just wanted to know. And that's been, I think, the main part of it. So I was able to get into teaching mm. without the qualification. And when I applied with the different companies, that was a big part of their requirement. So you can teach English with any qualification for most companies. Um, my company made an exception um, because of my work experience Beautiful. and because I'd shown them the track record of the things that I'd worked on. So my work experience kind of um, gave me the boost that I needed. And I would really suggest that anyone who wants to get into any field um, shouldn't really, what do they call it, self-reject yeah. because they feel like, okay, no, they're not adequate enough. If there's anything, my sister and I have always been, and she's the same as me, we don't have qualifications, and she's a catalog label. online. Jeez. Pretty much. And... <laughs> 
it's uh, yeah because you 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 find your way there. My sister is a catalog label manager at Sony right now, and Beautiful. even in that position, she was asked for qualifications, and she com com competed against hundreds of other qualified, experienced people. Yeah. But she was able to get it because of the experience. Beautiful. So we have always been those people who are like, no, we're going to try anyway. And this, see. Is, this is a teachable and, moment, and I think it's important to highlight yeah. it. The whole idea of getting a matric certificate, the whole idea of getting a degree or a diploma is to have this key to get into certain spaces. Right. And it's meant to be a portfolio of evidence to be like, this person is competent. Right. But at all times, experience beats theory. At right. all times. So if you've got, oh, I've got a sales certificate from this university and the next person is like, I have sold two million worth of this. Right. It's almost a no-brainer. So I think what Pumzil is emphasizing, which is important for you, if you can't get into higher education, you can't get into a diploma, go and get experience. Because when it's crunch time, hoping that the person hiring you has got a little bit nyana of a brain, they will be able to ascertain that this person has already done the work. Right. They may not have the piece of paper, mm. which is meant to say you can do the work. They have already done the work. So it's like you're getting an experienced person. Yeah. So thank you. You're welcome. But just to be fair, I think it doesn't always apply in every industry. Sure. And in every company, some people really do uh, emphasize that and they require that. I, so can debate, can. I can debate it, but you're right. Okay. Because so? some people are not willing to open their minds up. So I'll speak about more technical. By the way, we haven't forgotten. She must tell us how much money is made from these things. <laughs> right. Um, medical doctor, mm -hmm. which is a very sensitive job. Mm -hmm. Structural civil engineer building bridges and the, and the like. Mm -hmm. We could say you need a qualification. You need to understand the theory and because it's sensitive work. Right. But I could counter argue, just might take long that if I am the child of a medical doctor, mm -hmm. if I'm the child of a civil engineer, and I've been traveling with my parents mm -hmm. to these spaces and I've been learning on the job, there may be some technical stuff, some maths and whatever I may not understand, but mm -hmm. I can perform the surgery because I've spent, let's say like delivering children, which yeah. our mothers and grandmothers did back in the day. Yeah. That's a sensitive thing. You need to not only be a general practitioner, you need to specialize as a gynecologist. Right. But our mothers and grandmothers were delivering 50, 100 babies. So then by the time it's like, oh, we're looking for someone to help deliver babies. Like, oh, you don't have a medicine degree. Mm -hmm. It's like, but I've delivered babies. Right. But unfortunately, in certain spaces, and it's normally the employer and the regulators, mm -hmm. the regulators will say, look, as much as she's got experience, when we have to deal with risk or insurance, they're going to ask mm -hmm. as a bare minimum. And if the person doesn't have it, we unfortunately can't hire them. So... For, for a lot of industries, as you're saying, in the real world, right. you do need the qualification. But for right. some, the experience is good enough. Absolutely. And I see that many of, okay, maybe more international companies have started making way for people without qualifications mm -hmm. who have the experience, maybe the knowledge. Can I speak about Sita? Yeah. Joshua Maponga is an African spirituality, spiritualist. Uh -huh. Believes in African spirituality. Okay. He was a part of, he was a bishop for the Seventh Day Adventist Church mm -hmm. for I think 30 years. Now okay. he's on this journey. Yeah. A lot of people love him on social media. He was telling me, and I never went to verify it. CETA. Mm -hmm. CETA is this organization in South Africa which gives qualifications. If you want to lecture, for example, you have to get a CETA certificate right. so that you're compliant. Okay. He says that CETA was set up for people that have the experience but not the qualification. Mm. He claims initially, okay. not what it is now. So if you've been helping Imizi Samwe Lokshin, mm -hmm. helping Brickley, right. is CETA meant to come in, come to a site, mm -hmm. they send a qualified person right. to look at how you work mm -hmm. for a period of time and then say, this person qualifies to be. If you go, we can actually give our qualification to be a midwife. Okay. CETA was meant to be that. Right. To so what you're saying about international, I know the Googles and the Teslas of this world, mm. they want a portfolio of evidence, which right. is what school was meant to be. Right. Have you ever been able to deliver a baby? Mm. Yes, I sat and I apprenticed with this doctor and he can give me the uh, uh, thumbs up, the green stamp of approval. Right. Therefore, so CETA was meant to be that because there are so okay. many skilled people in South Africa. Right that don't have qualifications. You're right. So come through, Daisy Morfa, I accept. 
top front, top front. Yeah. So, okay, we've seen you make 500 Rand in a day over seven days mm -hmm. selling more fire. We will give you a basic sales diploma because right. you know customer management, customer retention, how to deal with rejection, how to make sure that the changes, all those things. Right. Sorry, international it's starting to see. Okay. No, and it it, would, it sounds like a great concept in, mm. in, in, in theory. I just wonder if it would work today in practice. And we've got a government. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll keep quiet today. No problem. So to answer your question about the, the money, people make some really good money teaching English. Yeah. Uh, myself included. Um, but of course, it's relative to whatever your needs are and your lifestyle. Um, uh, yeah. And if you look locally, yeah, okay. <laughs> so locally, I've seen that there are many companies that are hiring people to work at their offices. Okay. I work from home okay. and I'm a home-based trainer. That's what they call me. Sure. Um, so the local companies I've seen are paying anything between 5,000 to 10,000, maybe 12,000 rand a month this for teaching people every day. teaching like every day. Like a normal teacher. Yes. How so they, hours, I'd say more like, um, call center vibes. So I okay. think the people go to the office and they actually speak to the people virtually. Like oh, they do, do what you're doing. They do what I'm doing, office. but in an office. Exactly. Okay. Um, with the home-based trainers, it's different. You can work from pretty much anywhere in the world. Sure. Um, and you can make anything from $5 or euros per hour to maybe mm. 20, 30 euros per hour or dollars per hour. I don't know what that means. Which is pretty cool. Um, what does that mean in rents? <laughs> How many more fires can I buy with that? So if it's 18 euros. Well, let's make it 24 rent. for ease. 100 rand an hour for five euros. More or less, yeah. To 30. To 30 what? Did you say 30 euros? Yeah, to up to 30 euros, yeah. 30 euros, so if you multiply that by 20, it's 600 rand per hour. More or less. Teaching English. Yeah. And Jeez. it's pretty good money because I work seven hours a day. And, um, but of course, it's not like you work the full seven days of your availability. You set your availability. Yeah. And your bookings come in, maybe you have 10, 14 bookings, up to 14 bookings a day. Yeah. And you make your money based on how many bookings you have. So fortunately with the company I'm with, I always have bookings. So You're not going to tell us how much you earn? I make, if I'm being honest, between... You can tell us per hour. Per hour. You don't have to tell us how many hours you work a day. <laughs> right. Month. Okay. So it is 8 euros per hour. Times 20 is... 160. Yeah. Jeez, that's dope. Yeah. From a phone, at home, anywhere right. you are. Absolutely. Yeah. You enjoy it? I do, it's but training. it is, and it's not as much money as I used to make in production. So that's the thing I've been, I've been trying not to compare it too much. Yeah. And being like, oh, you know, because with production, you make some really good money. It's okay. anything from like 1,000 to 100 to 2,000 per day. Okay. And you could have a shoot that lasts 10, 12, 14 days, which is yeah. great money, but then it's 25% tax off, which sucks. But what, what type of, I guess we'd say children, yeah. adults, maybe even old people, do you think should consider teaching English or any foreign language online? Uh, what type of people do you think should be going for stuff like We've got huge mm -hmm. unemployment in the country. Right. 70 something percent of our youth is unemployed. Mm -hmm. General population is about 54% unemployment. There are okay. kids sitting at home. Some of them have diplomas, degrees. Some of them have done education mm -hmm. at a, a higher training institution. Some even have their postgraduate certificates in education, the PGCE, mm -hmm. but they're sitting at home unemployed. Right. Do you think those are some of the people that should be looking into things like that? I think, yes. If they've done the work and they have the qualifications, that makes it easier for them. But they are the parts of teaching that people don't understand. You're dealing with people every single day. And so you have to be someone who's patient. You have to be someone who's willing to work with people at different levels because you might be someone who is going through the lo through a lot in a day. Sure. Um, but your learners don't give a shit about that. Yeah. They want you to deliver and they want you to meet them at the level that they are. Yeah. So being patient is an absolutely underrated 
quality yeah. or personality trait. Um, if you enjoy getting to know people and you enjoy conversing and um, what else? Yeah, if you if you really enjoy teaching and you're willing to learn as you go, then I would suggest that you apply. And there's so many websites that you can apply on. If you just Google teach English online um, companies, you're not, there some are, of them are not scammy. Yeah, some of them are scammy. That's mm -hmm. why you'd have to do your homework and check, 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 check. <laughs> chirk. <laughs> Go chirk. Go chirk the homework. <laughs> And just check that the site is a credible one, maybe even verified um, on different pages like Hello Peter, but for international English pages, I don't know what they're called. But usually there are people who will vet something and be like, no, this is not a good site to mm -hmm. apply with. Um, Glassdoor is also a good place to look. Glassdoor. Glassdoor, yeah. Okay. That's usually, a website? Yes. Okay. So Dot usually. Glassdoor.com, uh, yeah. And it's a nice platform because the companies can comment. It's like a Hello Pizza of South Africa, but okay. global one on different industries and so on. And employees can come on the page, mm. comment, and um, share their experiences, how much they earn, the pros and cons of working with the company. So it's yeah. a great site for that. And um, yeah, what was your question again? <laughs> a quick teachable moment since yes. we're here. For some of you that may not know, Hello Peter is a website. Uh -huh. It's not as popular as it used to be. Right. Where people would go and complain about a certain company, the treatment they got, the service they got. I don't know if they were meant to be also for people that give compliments. Yes. I don't think people really use it for not that, really. just complaining. Yeah. Today, a lot of us use Twitter. You know, we just tag a company and we, yeah, I didn't get my data or whatever. They, that's what Hello Peter is. That's what she's speaking about. Mm -hmm. And she's saying Glassdoor is that. For a bulk of the South African population, a lot of us haven't jumped into Google reviews. Google has got this great platform where, mm -hmm. whether it's a restaurant, whether it's some business, you can review them online. Yeah. And we need to find a way to normalize reviewing everywhere we go. Right. Because what that does is when the rest of us go to a place, if one of us use certain accommodation, use a certain product, we can go and get your opinions. Some of us go onto Google review and we look at people's comments but we never leave our own. Mm -hmm. So it's like, who are you expecting to comment? So I think stuff like that is very important. I know some of the people that I know personally that have taught English as a foreign language, yeah. they go onto Facebook groups, uh, wherever they may be. And some of the people, they will tell you, it's not a good place. Um, I've worked with those people, they stole my money. That's it. I don't think you're supposed to give these people money per se. Mm -hmm. I don't know if any of them ask for money. No, the companies usually know. Um, okay. So that's normally a red flag. Right, if, like, if they're asking for money, then it's a bit dodge. Yeah. So just be careful. That's very And I dodge. think the other question for me, um, yeah. would you be open, and maybe this could be a paid service. Uh -huh. You've already said you're doing 160 Rand an hour. Yes. Maybe we could say for people that are interested at 200 Rand an hour, mm -hmm. you can contact Upum Zile, yeah. and she'll maybe give you a list of verified websites you can use so that you don't have to go through the hassle, onto the Hello Peters and the glass doors and the Twitters. She'd be like, guys, try these out, mm -hmm. can vet them, and maybe she can also speak to you as well and advise you. A lot of you are sitting at home, maybe on free Wi-Fi, you don't know what to do, and here's a chance. Mm -hmm. You can speak this language, yeah, Queen Elizabeth, no King Charles, and you're not doing anything with it, and here's an opportunity to make money. So Absolutely. I don't know if you'd agree to that. Okay. If you can, then I'll try and get you, maybe her email address will probably be easiest in the description, and then you guys can connect with her, and she can help with that. Okay. Yeah. Cool. No, I'm more than keen. That's okay. Anything else you want to tell us about the work you're doing? Trace the space? <laughs> What's that about? So I I think you've figured, well, you, you can tell from just our conversation that I'm a bit all over the place. I'm a bit of a dabbler. So you're a curious mind. I wanted to say this earlier. Yeah. For our Williams <laughs> was saying on a platform, uh -huh. the most important quality for high performing human beings to have is yeah. curiosity. Right. Because when you're curious, yeah. you then want to be, or you become an autodidact. You uh -huh. go around chasing knowledge. Right. When other people are watching twerking videos and other people are drinking, you want to consume knowledge to improve your life. Right. And I think that's probably why you dabble in a whole lot of different things. Yeah. You're a curious mind and you want to know and you want to explore, Absolutely. which is pretty dope. 
But you know what the challenge is with that? Mm. You cannot find an ideal place to work in. And then the question becomes, right, exactly. And so do you now start something? I think that's probably the most practical thing for anyone with multi, who's multi-disciplined yeah. um, to do that. Maybe they start their own business, but not everyone's entrepreneurial. So what sure. happens then? And finding that one thing to do is not necessarily something that I think anyone can do. I don't necessarily think I have one thing, but Chase's space is... Um, one of those things and I started it as a bit of a filmmaking project mm. yeah because I, I grew up in the arts so I was exposed to exposed to the theater very young mm. um, my mom was an actress and Beautiful. director and producer she produced her own um, theatrical shows and yeah besides that we had two cinemas in Hillbrow because I grew up in Hillbrow and we frequented the cinemas very often. I used to be one of those kids that would sit through the credits just to understand how a film comes together. And so, yeah, those interests kind of, they stick with you. And it's hard to kind of be like, I'm going to chop this off and yeah. try and be a more serious person. That's probably another reason where the teaching came in, that I was trying to find something more sustainable, something reliable, something adult-like, because... <laughs> Film is one of those industries where if you don't have a concrete plan and mm. an idea for what you want to do in the film industry. So, for example, crew. Um, what are you going to do sure. in crew? And people know you as that go-to person. Mm. And when you start changing into something else, they kind of start giving you the side eye. Like, I don't know, you know, because people want to know you for that one yeah, specific thing in so most easy. cases. Exactly. Yeah. So I've never really been that person who can fit into a place that long. And I've been teaching for four years now. I'm starting to feel well like done. it's... Thank you. Four years teaching. At least yeah. I'm stuck. <laughs> You know, the edits are like four years sober. <laughs> four years sober. But, <laughs> but teaching is amazing. It really is complementary to my personality because I really do enjoy engaging with people on a daily yeah. basis. And you have conversations. You're supposed to introduce a lesson plan and introduce grammar points and work on um, whatever the learner wants to work on or whatever they've been assigned to work on. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe help them with their work-related stuff. But just in general it kind of feeds into that that aspect of my life that enjoys learning about people and storytelling and i'm going to put you on the spot this is going to be my last question to you okay for people that suffer from what you suffer from there's yeah. a lot of us um, yes for whatever reason you did well at school mm -hmm. you did well at sports mm -hmm. you did well in the arts and cultural items yeah you love reading maybe you write a little bit here and there you want to act you want to sing yeah what, what do you think is the solution for those people for a fulfilling life? It's mm -hmm. a difficult question. Right. And I'm putting you on the spot. I don't know if you'd be able to give an answer. Okay. It's a good question, but it's a tough one to yeah. answer. Um, I'm also st still trying to figure it out myself. Yeah. Um, but I do know one thing for certain is that if you make what you're passionate about or what you find as a hobby... Mm the thing that you expect to feed you and clothe you and you depend on it to start generating money, you're going mm. to be miserable. Sure. So I, because of my circumstances and the fact that I don't have anyone else to rely on and mm. I have to basically take care of myself, I, I don't have family to fall back on. I have to find ways of um, giving life to those interests, yeah. but taking care of myself. So having a job actually does allow me to enjoy the hobby a little bit more. Sure. And hopefully if I am committed and dedicated enough and disciplined enough to grow the side hustle, it can replace my full-time job. Yeah. But I don't necessarily think it's there's anything wrong with being someone who has 10 different interests and you find time in your week mm. in on the weekends to explore that interest but having a reliable source of income is 
extremely important, mm-hmm. especially for your mindset. Of course. You function better if you're able to, to eat and to have eat, a roof over your head. You know? Yeah. Plus, yeah, the thing of, oh, there's no time is is not something that I, I, I actually buy into. You make the time. Yeah. And I usually what I do is I have a whole schedule and I fit my niece in after school and then in the evenings I make time for myself. But that's another thing. I like I'm a closet artist and I do everything for myself and I don't actually publish it out <laughs> into the world. Those are my happy moments where I get to spend just uninterrupted time creating and doing stuff. But mm. the challenge now is to get myself to put myself out there. And yeah, so maybe the main thing is for us to start creating our own. And it, the internet has made it so much easier for us to mm. put our stuff out there. It's not as complicated or complex as it used to be. You can use your smartphone to create content. Mm. Um, if you draw, you can do that and sell your stuff on Facebook and True. market on Instagram. There's so many opportunities, but I think we're not thinking big enough because we make too many, we make, We've created homes for our excuses, is what I wanted to say. Yeah. Kumzile, thank you so much. If you have one more message, maybe for our viewers, before you come visit us again, (laughs) before I close off the show. Um, Yeah, teaching English is a great opportunity for anyone who's interested. Um, I am more than happy to uh, hook you up with that list of sites and um, recommendations in terms of how to go into it and so on. Yeah. But thank you so much for having me. This was interesting thank and you. fun. <laughs> Guys, please don't forget to click on the subscribe button and on the notification bell for future episodes. For a lot of you who are multi-talented, this is going to be my advice from my side. Try and find like-minded people and don't do things alone. What do I mean by that? There was a book many years ago called Chimorena, I think, which was a collection of articles written by different things. You're a writer, you don't have the patience and the discipline to write a full book. Write a short story, write a few pages, come together with like 10 people and you guys can collaborate on a book together. Do the same with art. Don't have the discipline to do 50 artworks for an exhibition. Because you can make one, some of your friends in your network can make a few guys have a joint exhibition. Uh, If you want to set up a language school, as an example, you want to teach people how to be computer literate, how to make money off their phones, you don't have time, you have a job, you have kids. Try and find people and use the internet to create these groups. I've got WhatsApp groups for so many different things. Create WhatsApp groups. If you're a writer, but you like the discipline, please join my group. You join, guys. Here's the theme for the next six months. We're going to write a story about dragons in Kenya. Everyone is going to chip their little bit. I'm going to write an article this week. You write an article. We come together like a boy band, like any band, like a, a film crew, and we create a collaborative effort so that you can do so many things without having to commit to one thing on your own. That's my advice. This is the virtual cool. pretty cool. This is Penuel, the Black Pen. Shout out to, again, More Fire and DJ Smooth. And we look forward to you guys joining us on the next episode. Cheers.